Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei, back with another Power Query tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing a running occurrence count. So, example, we got various portfolios and we got stocks in those portfolios. So, I'm going to count how many times, doing a running occurrence, how many times a specific stock occurs in across those portfolios. So, here we have Apple, it appears six times across these portfolios. And then we basically do it for all the stocks in there. So, let me show you how to do it. All right, let's put it into Power Query. I'm gonna delete that step. First thing is we need to sort by the field that we wanna do the running occurrence on, and that's the stock code. I'm gonna sort by stock code. Cool, now it's all sorted. I'm just gonna rename the step just for simplicity of reference. Sorted stocks. And now I wanna take the stock code column and turn it into a list because I wanna take advantage of list functionality. So I'm gonna say new step, and I'm gonna just in square brackets say stock Code, which is that one over there and this is going to convert that into a list so now one of the benefits of a list is if I refer to curly brackets I say number zero it's going to give me the first item in that list if I say item number 10 it's going to give me the tenth item in that list so just remember that when we move on to the next section of this video we're going to use this functionality with the curly brackets to do the occurrence count. Okay, I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna rename this custom step just to stock list, so we know it's a stock list. Before we go on, we are gonna use a great function called list generate. So let's head on over to ChatGPT. What does list generate do in Power Query? All right, so that's pretty cool. So it basically tells me that list generate creates a list based on a set number of conditions. We're going to create the occurrence count in this list based on some conditions. So the four arguments we take in here is the start, okay, the condition, the next, and the selector. So I'm going to take us through all of those steps. So let's quickly go back. All right, I'm going to open the advanced editor. And in here, we're now going to add a new step. I'm just going to call this stock list instance. Okay. And here we're going to use list generate. Yeah. And we're going to open a bracket. Cool. Let's start by defining the start condition. What is that? So there I'm going to start with, uh, it's a function. So it's a rocket ash. We have two variables. We have the loop counter, like in any good loop. That's going to track how many loops we're doing. So we're going to loop through every single item in this list. So that is our loop counter. And we're going to set that by default starting at 1. And then we are going to have an instance counter. So counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 apples. Instance count. And I'm going to put that to 1 as well. So that is our start condition. Cool. Next one is our condition. So... How do we loop through this thing? So we don't want to, we want to loop through everything in this list. So we need to basically count the items in the list and make sure that our loop counter um, is less than the number of items in this list. So what we do there is each, you always start with each because it's each item in this list. And we say underscore, which is the current one, loop counter must be smaller or equal than list dot count because we're going to do a count of the stock list let me put there stock list so we can never go higher than that so stock list is our limitation all right cool so there we go the next thing is our next portion of our function okay so this is actually where we create the occurrence count so here we also start with each and here we say loop counter we want to set the value for the loop counter it's equal to the current loop counter with the underscore plus one yes yeah, so we're setting that first variable and then the second one we want to set the instance count instance count is equal to if okay so now i'm iterating through every item in the list if stock list so from the list and in curly brackets remember if you put a zero in there, it's actually your current position, right? And we're going to use the loop counter. We say loop counter, yes, is equal to 
stock list. The previous, so now I'm comparing to a previous um, item in the list. Let's put in there and also the brackets. And there I say current loop counter, yeah, less one. So it's the previous one. So if it is equal, if this current one is equal to the previous one, then, then my current instance count plus one, else just make it one. Cool. That's it. So now we're iterating through each item and we're setting the instances. If they're the same, we add to the, the previous one. And if it's not the same, we start at one. All right. And then the last step here is just to return the selector. We want to return the instance count. We just say there each, we return the instance count. And that should be it. I'm just going to return in there. Count. And now what this has done, it's basically converted it into the number. So one, two, three, four, five, six for all the apples and then starts again counting. This is your running occurrence. But now it's useless because it's just a list. So now we need to add it back to the sorted list. So we need to add that instance to the sorted list. So how do we do that? We first add a new step. And in this step, we refer not to stock instance, but to sorted stocks. Yeah, so now with the sorted stocks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add table, add index column. We can add it to there and I'm going to call it index. And we're going to start at zero and in increments of one. And we want it to be in 64 type. Cool. That is now added an index column. And remember, a list starts counting at zero as well. So now in order to merge it with that stock instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a custom column. And that custom column, let's call this the stock occurrence counter. Here we simply refer to the stock list instance because the previous step, list instance. This is the result of our list generate function. And remember with lists, you can return zero, one or two. And remember we have a list of zero to the end of the list. So we did just feed it the index. So now we kind of like joining our list back to our main table. So if we press okay, it basically added our stock occurrence counter. There it is. I'm gonna add it there to the front. And there you go, there's your stock instance counter. Pretty, pretty cool formatted so it's portfolio so there you go pretty cool i hope that gave you some insight on how to use list generate which is quite a cool function i don't like the performance of this guy it takes a little bit long there are some other ways to do this but this is one of those solutions where it kind of like opens your mind to the possibility of list generate it's not the best performing one um there are some better ways to do this but i will make more videos on that but anyway ba sensei signing out <laughs>